Hello everyone. Today I want to show you some file and directory commands in Linux. So let's start the console and let's see the command cd and pwd. pwd can tell you in which directory you are located at the moment. So this is my home directory. It means actually print working directory. And with cd you can change between directories. The name of the command means actually change directory. The slash means the root directory. So with this we can go to the root. Here there are some subdirectories. If I want to enter home for instance then cd home. Now we are in the home directory which opens from the root. Here there is a subdirectory Java. With cd you can enter and now we are there. If you are somewhere else, now we are in the root directory. So it doesn't matter where you are. If you issue the command cd without any parameters, you will always get back to your home directory. So this is a shortcut to go back to the home directory. Here I will enter for instance pictures and if uh, you want to go back to the parent you need to use cd dot dot. It goes back to the parent directory. Here once again then we get back to slash home. Again now we are in the root directory. Let's say that we are in the root. With cd I get back to my home directory. And how could I go back to the previous directory? Not to the parent but to the previous where I was before. You use cd dash. It means go back to the previous. Previously I was in the root so that's where I get back. If I issue cd dash again I will get back to the home directory because I was there before coming to the root. So it is also good to know. We have seen pwd. It prints the path of the current directory. The next command is ls. With this you can see the content of a directory. It is similar to the command dir under Windows. So I am in my home directory and with ls I can see the files and directories. Here directories are painted blue but uh, it can it can be black also on your system. Mm, but it doesn't show all the files because here as you can see for instance there is a directory dot local which doesn't appear if I simply use ls. It is because ls doesn't show the hidden files and hidden directories. And what is a hidden file or hidden directory uh, under Linux? It's, uh, it's an entry whose name starts with a dot. They are considered to be hidden. How to see them too? We need to use the dash a. It means all. I want to list all the entries. And now they are there. But as you can see it's uh, still a minimal list. I cannot see the size of the file, the permissions on a, of a file. So if we want to see those information too we need to add the L switch which means long. 
So this is how I use the ls command, usually with dash al. And then we have a nice uh, detailed list. Let's see, for instance, this file. This is the name of the file. This is the date of creation. This is the size of the file. It in bytes, it is 88 bytes. This is the user, the owner of the file. This is the group of the file. And here we can see the permissions nine, in nine characters and here the type of the entry. Dash means it's a simple file. I will talk about file permissions a bit later. So if I want to see the content of the directory, this is what I use all the time. Mm, there is also dash one which prints uh, the entries below each other. If you use just ls and if there are lots of entries, they are printed next to each other. So for instance, if you want to send an email with the content of a directory, the output of ls-1 can be better because you can simply copy and paste it. Okay, now let's see touch. With the command touch I will go to slash tmp and here I already prepared the directory files. Here I, ha I already have four files. With touch, we can create a new file, and this new file will be empty. So it is there, and its size is zero. So this is what touch does. Create a new file, a new empty file. mkdir rmdir. With mkdir, you can create a directory. The name of the command means make directory. And here let's keep, let's create for instance subdir. And now this directory is there. If you want to create a subdirectory and uh, in that directory you want to create another, for instance lab slash zero one, it won't work. If you create more, if you want to create more subdirectories, add the switch dash p. It means parent. So it will create the directory 01 together with its parent. Okay. Now lab is there. And inside lab we have 01. Good. With cd dot dot, you can go back to the parent directory. So this is mkdir. Now let's see rmdir. rmdir means uh, remove directory. Subdir is empty, so we can remove it. And as you can see, it didn't ask for for a confirmation. It removed the directory without asking any questions. Okay, so with rmdir we can only remove directories that are empty. Now, lab has a subdirectory 01. So with rmdir I cannot remove it because it's not empty. So if I want to remove it one simp uh, uh, naive way is that I enter and remove the content 
and then we can remove this directory too. So now it's gone. But actually, if I want to remove a directory and if it has content in it, I usually use midnight commander for that purpose. But I will talk about midnight commander uh, later. Okay. And now let's see these three comments RM, CP, and MV. With RM, you can remove a file. So let's delete new file.txt. And these three comments are can be dangerous because if you want to remove a file, it won't ask anything. It won't ask for confirmation. So the file is, sim is removed immediately, no questions asked. And if you delete a file under Linux or Unix, it's very, very difficult to get it back. So if you remove a file, then that file is removed, gone. So pay attention to what you delete. RM has a switch dash i which means interactive and then if you want to remove a file it will ask for a confirmation do you really want to delete it and here you can change your mind if you want to remove it then of course say yes and then the file is gone with cp you can copy a file So let's make a copy of c.txt under the name new.txt. So you provide the source file and you provide the name of the destination file. And now it's there. And cp can also be dangerous because if the destination file exists then this command will overwrite that file. So now the content of new.txt is this file is C. This is file C. Okay. Let's make a copy of a.txt under the name new.txt. new.txt exists, but cp has overwritten it. So now the content is this is file A. The file was overwritten. Again, it has a switch dash i, which will make it interactive. So I want to make a copy of b.txt under the name new. And now it will ask us that uh, new.txt exists. Do we really want to overwrite it? And here we have a chance to change our mind. And the third command in this group is mv, which means move. It can do two things. First, you can rename a file. For instance, I want to uh, uh, rename new.txt and the new file name should be, for instance, old. The file is renamed. Fine. Let's create a subdirectory here. And with MV, you can also move a file to somewhere else. So, for instance, I want to move all the TXT to, the sub, to this subdirectory. So, here, old.txt is gone and it was moved to this subdirectory. Fine. And MV is also dangerous. It will overwrite a file without asking any questions. And here again you can use the dash i switch. For instance I want to rename a.txt and the new name should be c.txt. But c.txt exists. Do we really want to overwrite it? Let's say yes. 
So now a.txt is gone and it was renamed to c.txt and it has the content, this is file A. Okay, I think uh, I told you everything or <laughs> the most important things about these comments. So in the next video we will continue with uh, other file and directory comments. If you like this video, click on like, please, <laughs> and thank you for your attention.